Here I am at Castle Coombe in a Caterham Academy car and I'll talk you through a couple of laps. The first kink right we come to is called Folly and that's easily full throttle which then leads us into Avon Rise and Quarry. Avon Rise is taken in fourth, Quarry taken in third and it's a very dangerous part of the circuit so really build up to it, take some confidence. You can take the left full throttle but it does take experience and good car control to do it. You're looking to brake just where that left hand apex is, keep the car as much to the left as possible and then carry the brakes initially into the right. You hold that curb on the inside for a small period before picking up the throttle and then hopefully using that exit curb. The S's is taken in third and a really good brake reference is this Marshall's post on the left. It's a long light trail brake from that point there up until between the two apexes looking to pick up the power at that left hand apex using all that exit curve and then keep bringing the car slightly to the left before old paddock bend which should be full throttle. I then stay fully to the left just to take the shortest possible distance to tower. Again there's a nice Marshall's post there. I brake just before that Marshall's post on the left. Hard brake down to third looking to carry a light trail brake in and then holding that inside for quite a long period before picking up the power. Bobby Chicane's also taken in the third. It's a hard brake just before that sign. I get on a bit of a power at the first apex but then look to accelerate from that second apex as I go into the dip using both apex and exit curve. We then come to the final corner, Camp, taken in fourth and it's really easy to overslow the car here. It's a lot wider on the exit than it is on the way in so it looks tighter than it is. It's a light to medium brake just before turning, look to pick up the power before that inside kerb then hopefully you get pushed out wide onto the exit kerb using all that extra whip and obviously trying to get a good drive onto the straight. I'll now talk you through the same lap but this time in slow motion so I've got time to go over each corner in a bit more detail. Without wishing to sound too scaremongering I can't emphasise enough how easy it is to lose the car at the top of Avon rise the left before you get into quarry. As you get to the brow of the hill the car goes a bit light, you're normally trying to go down to third gear at roughly the same time and it's very easy to lose the rear end and end up in the wall or on the grass. So really build up to this. The left hander if you're experienced and confident is full throttle but it does take a lot of confidence to do it. I'd say the main thing here is not to turn in too early into the left hander. If you do turn in too early to the left you have to keep too much left lock on the car as you're braking and then naturally the car wants to step out a bit to the rear. If you do feel you've done that just get the car straight up don't worry too much about the line you end up coming into quarry just get the car braked in a straight line and get the speed off you also you want to turn into the left full throttle turning in slightly later than maybe feels natural and you're looking to brake when that left front wheel gets into that curb on the left you want to try and keep the car as much to the left as you can without obviously losing the rear you'll see I get a little bit of oversteer on this lap trying to keep the car as much to the left as I can you then down to third carrying a good amount of trail brake into quarry initially into the right hander and then you're going to hold the right hand apex you like every corner you'll always have a slight period where you're just off both pedals as the car rotates the maximum mid corner then you're looking to pick up the power it's very wide on the exit you can get quite quickly onto full throttle to really make sure you're pushed out onto that exit curve on the left on the way out. We then come to the S's. As mentioned on the previous lap, a really good brake reference is that Marshall's post on the left. And for me, this corner is all about the trail braking. There's a very wide, long entry phase to the corner. You're not looking to pick up the power until that left hand apex. So think of the entry phase to the corner as your braking zone. You're not looking to really take too much speed off before the corner. So you're keeping an eye on that Marshall's post on the left in your peripheral vision. That's where you're going to hit the brake. But it's just a light brake, carrying a long, light trail brake all the way into the corner. Try and cut as much of this curb on the right as you can, obviously without hitting the tyre stack. You're to come off the brakes about halfway between both apexes picking up the power now at the left hand apex again quickly to full throttle using all that curb on the right and then just start bringing the car just slightly to the left to set yourself up nicely for old paddock bend Old paddock bend should be full throttle but it may take a few laps just to build up to it. To make it slightly easier for yourself, as the track kinks to the right on the approach, just let the car come out of car width, car width and a half and that just slightly opens up the angle to allow you to keep full throttle all the way through. You'll find that you need to change up to third to fourth, more or less mid corner. Don't be tempted to do the gear change early or let it hit the limiter until you get to the exit curb. You just have to get used to doing that gear change at the mid corner point. And then keep the car on the left all the way on the approach to tower just to take the shortest possible distance. Tower is then going to be quite a hard break, probably the second hardest break on the circuit after quarry. Again, a really good reference point is this Marshall's post on the left. You're braking just before that point. So it's going to be a hard break just before the Marshall's post, and then onto light brake pressure as you get towards your turning. It's not the sort of corner where you have a, a short apex. You don't apex and then come straight off the inside. You're actually going to hold the inside circuit for a small period of time. So you're on a light brake pressure at this point. Then eventually you're going to come off the brakes, have that small period where you do nothing where the car rotates. Then you start to feed the power down, and you generally tend to get a bit of understeer at this point. So you have to just hold a little bit of throttle initially before then getting to full throttle. 
We then come to Bobby's chicane and I do something here that I very rarely do when I'm driving which is I get a little bit of stabilizing throttle at that right hand apex. The reason being the corner's got a big dip between the two apexes and I just want to keep some weight over the rear of the car and keep the car stable. So I'm looking to brake just a little bit for that turn ball on the left, a hard brake and use all this right hand kerb. Then it's just a little bit of stabilizing throttle here so I'm not looking to accelerate the car, just keep the car almost at constant speed before then accelerating that left hand kerb. Having used all that left hand kerb, hopefully now I can quickly get to full throttle using all the exit kerb. Like I say that's not a technique I would normally advise but just for this particular corner with the characteristics it has I just try and get on that little bit of throttle that right hand apex just to keep some weight over the rear so the back end doesn't step out too much on me as I go through the dip between the two apexes. We then finish the lap at camp. It's really, really easy to accidentally overbrake the car here. I do it myself sometimes the first few laps when I'm setting data. It's a lot wider on the way out than it is the way in, so it kind of gives you the perception that it's tighter than it is. It's only a light to medium break just before turning a little bit along this grass on the left. And your apex is actually before the curb, so it's a light to medium break about now, and then looking to carry a light break as you turn in, and then you're looking to accelerate before that inside curb. Just because there's a curb there doesn't mean that's where your apex is. Your apex is actually before that curb, then you're looking to accelerate through that curb, having used that curb, hopefully quickly to full throttle around about the curb or slightly afterwards, and carrying enough speed that you then really get pushed out into that extra space you have on the way out, pushed out onto that exit curb. You're relatively low in the revs in fourth gear here, so any extra speed you can carry on the way out really makes a big difference to your straight line speed.